In Dynamics 365, we can store the contact's photograph or image on the record. So if I click on the photograph here, this is the photograph that's stored against this specific contact. So that's great. We can put that into, it's basically an entity image field. So we can put that photograph, we can use flow to update it and so on. That's great. However, if we want to then use that same photograph for the contact on something that needs to be accessible to the outside world, meaning it needs to be some kind of storage that um, doesn't have security around it, that sort of thing, we're not going to be able to use that entity image. So for things like um, a Power BI report or a Microsoft portal, you're not going to be able to use that entity image unless you've got it in a URL string that can be accessible to the outside world. So in order to do that, um, we need to use a Microsoft flow and also a real time workflow. So let's walk through how to do that. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, so if I go to processes, we've got an update image process that I've created. So what we are doing is we're basically adding a couple of fields onto the contact record. So if you don't already, we're going to have a Twitter image, um, oh, sorry, a Twitter handle field that can just be a single line of text. So that will be where you can store somebody's Twitter handle so that when that field gets populated, when somebody actually adds that information to it, let me just go to it whilst we're waiting for that to load. Um, if we add information to this Twitter field, such as at Megan V Walker, what we're doing is we're going to have a workflow that is a real-time workflow that runs on change of that specific field. When that field gets changed and the workflow runs, it's going to change this update image field to yes, and that will kick off and, and, and basically make the workflow run. So let's hopefully, there we go. So that's open now. So the um, record, um, the, the field that we're looking at, so it's on the change of that Twitter field. So if I scroll down to the Twitter field, there we go. So on change of the Twitter field, what we're doing is we're checking to make sure, does the Twitter field contain data? If it does not, then it's empty. So in other words, someone's removed that, then we're basically going to clear another field, which is the image URL field. And that's where we're going to actually store the URL to that image once we've actually run the flow to go ahead and, and, and get that URL. Otherwise, if the contact um, Twitter field does contain data, then we're going to change that update image field to yes. What we're then going to do is use that as the trigger to, or, or the condition to check and make sure that we should actually go back out to Twitter, get their new profile image, and then go ahead and actually upload it somewhere where we can access it and then use it in things like Power BI and the portals and that sort of thing. Okay, so if we now um, go ahead and we'll look at the... Well, let's go ahead and put it in the first floor so that it kicks off. I'm going to go ahead and put in Megan B. Walker and we'll go ahead and save this. Now, because this is the real time workflow, immediately that update image field is changed to yes. OK, so that should have kicked off a Microsoft flow. So let's walk through the flow that we'll be running. So the first thing that we're doing and we're looking at is we say when a record is updated, and we connect to the organization name and we're looking at the entity name of contacts. So when a contact record is updated, we are basically going to be checking a condition. And our condition here is looking to see that the update image field is equal to true. So in other words, this field right here is equal to yes. And again, remember, it's that real time workflow that has gone ahead and done that because we've changed that that Twitter um, the Twitter field. So it should only ever be yes when we're actually putting stuff or removing stuff and, and making a change to that field. So if it is equal to false, in other words, it's no. So we've changed something else on the contact record, then we're going to end that flow. If we don't have this condition and we just let it run all the time, then it will run through any time anything has changed on the on the contact, which we don't want. So if, it, if it's not true, then let's end that. If it's yes, then the first step, we're going to go ahead and get the record. We're going to use that as the action. So we're connecting again to the organization. We're using the contact entity and the item identifier is the contact ID from the first trigger. 
So if you haven't ever done a flow before, um, it's very, very simple in terms of the item identifier. We're picking dynamic content. You can see here, it says when a record is updated, and that is the name of that first step. So we're basically going to look through that step and we can either scroll or we can type in contact. Contact. And there is the contact. So that's the unique identifier of the contact. So we're gonna click on it and it will populate it into that field over on the left. So we're getting the record. Then what we're doing is we are using the Twitter connector and we are getting the user and by uh, on Twitter, and we're doing that by populating the Twitter field from the contact. So from this step right here, we're populating the Twitter field into the username field on this specific action. Okay. So after that, what we're going to do is we're going to upload a file from a URL. So the URL we're going to upload it from is the profile image URL, so that's the public profile image on Twitter that someone has, and we're going to use OneDrive to upload that file from Twitter and basically put it into OneDrive. So our destination file path, you could put it in the root, you could put it in a specific folder like I have, so I've got a um, path of profile images, and then I've got forward slash, and I'm going to use the username from the get user step. So if I click in here, we can see that get user step I'm using that username dot JPEG. So for my Twitter account, my username is Megan B. Walker. So we'll be creating a file called Megan B. Walker dot JPEG and putting it into the profile images folder in OneDrive. So um, the next um, field on there is, do we want to overwrite that? Um, if you are going to, um, do this every time somebody changes this, then yes, you probably want to overwrite it. Otherwise, you're going to have duplicates of MeganBWalker.jpg if I'm changing that um, Twitter handle every so often or if somebody's making changes to it. We want to make sure that, um, that we overwrite the original file each time. All right, so next what we want to do is we want to get the file content from OneDrive. Um, we are going to use the step above of upload file from URL and we're basically going to populate that with the ID. So we can see that upload file from URL is the step name. These are all the pieces of dynamic content from that specific step and we just are going to add in the ID. So we can see I just click in it and it populates into that field. All right, so after we've done that, so we've got the record, we've got the Twitter user, we've uploaded their profile image from the Twitter URL, we've got the file content. Now we're going to put that file content somewhere that we're then going to be able to access that file from a URL that is web accessible. So in other words, people from outside of our organization can get to it. So for that, we're going to use Azure Blob Storage. So it's a really cost efficient, um, alternative to storing everything in Dynamics 365 and it also means that you can have a URL link that people would be able to get access to from outside of your organization. So again we're going to have a folder path where do you want to store these images. The blob name again I'm going to use the username from the person on Twitter dot jpeg as the as the name of that blob or the file and then the blob content we're basically getting the file content from this step right here. So we're basically saying that's the file content, that's the blob that we're uploading. Okay. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to update the contact record. So that record identifier is from the get record step when we're using the contact ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the image URL field that we added and the URL that you want to put in there is the first part of the URL for where that um, uh, the folder path is within your Azure blob storage. Then you're going to do for forward slash and you're going to do name which is the name of the file that you basically have just created in the create blob step. So that is basically going to take the URL image and it's going to populate it into the, um, into the field on the contact record. Okay, so 
those are all the steps. So if I go back to perfect, so there, oh, not that one, sorry. Uh, go with this one. All right, so here we can see we've got when a record is updated, we've checked that first condition to make sure that the update image is set to true. Um, and then we can see we've got all of these steps that have the green tick. That means that they've all been successful. Now, one final thing that is important that I forgot to mention, if I go back to the update a record, yes, we're going to update it with the image URL. But what we also want to do is if I scroll towards the bottom, you remember with the um, the real time workflow, we basically set that update image um, field from a no to a yes so that it triggered. So the end of this workflow is also going to change the update image field to no so that next time someone makes a change to that contact record, it's not always checking and saying, oh, it's set to yes, let's run this flow. So we want to make sure that we change that to no as part of the end of that um, Microsoft flow. So now if I go ahead and I refresh, There we go. So now we can see update image is set to no, and we have a path in here for the image URL. Now, um, I'm not going to um, talk through how to create Power BI reports or anything, but just to kind of show you what I mean in terms of being able to use that now on a Power BI report. Um, if you use that new image URL field, we've got it here on the report. What you can do is you can set the data category so instead of showing it as a web URL, we can actually say show it as an image URL. So if I change that, it will change the format. So actually will allow us to display the image on the Power BI report rather than just showing the text. So hopefully that will be of use um, in order to be able to get an image. And obviously it's, I'm showing you creating it from using it from Twitter, but you could basically have somebody upload an image somewhere and, and use that flow to be able to actually then put it in Azure Blob Storage so that you can get a web accessible link and then be able to use it in things like a Microsoft portal, Power BI report, that sort of thing.